praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He set them in place forever and ever. He gave a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths. Lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding. You mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle. Small, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth. Young men and, and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. He has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his saints of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Praise, 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 praise. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? Praise. The Bible reading as Dave and Evelyn read it. How many times did the word praise appear in it? Let's count them together, shall we? Well, not count them together. We'll spend a minute. Count how many times does the word praise appear in this psalm? Does anyone think they know? Sam? 13. I think it's 13. Anyone else think it's 13? Yeah, yeah, good. I'm glad we've got a consensus. 14 verses, 13 times, praise, praise, praise. This psalm is all about praise. It's full of it. Verse 1 says, praise the Lord. Who is the Lord? Who is the Lord? The Lord is God. When it says Lord in capital letters, that is the name of God. So this psalm is all about praising God. And do you see what's told to praise him? All sorts of things. This psalm, it starts off really high, doesn't it? If you look up and you look out into space, you know, the sun, the moon, the trillions of stars, the angels, they're all to praise him. And then the psalm comes down really low, doesn't it? It goes right down to bottom of the sea and you know what's in the sea the starfish and whales and clownfish and octopuses and seahorse and jellyfish and sharks and crabs and they're all to praise the lord and then we've got all of this stuff in between the heavens and the bottom of the sea haven't we apple trees elephants pigeons horses cows mice everything. And then there's the weather, lightning and wind and hail. It's all to praise the Lord. And finally, well, there's you and me, isn't there? All sorts of people here, really rich people like kings and queens, and then people who don't even have clothes to wear, don't have a home to live in. From the richest to the poorest, young and old, boys and girls, men and women, all of these things are told. Praise the Lord. I don't know what comes into your mind when you hear the word praise, 
For me, I think back to when I was a little boy, on a Sunday evening, my mum and dad would put the TV on BBC One, Songs of Praise, with Pam Rhodes. That's what comes to mind when I think of praise, choirs, stuff like that. It doesn't always seem terribly exciting. It can sometimes seem a bit passive, a bit boring. Like to, to praise the Lord just means to kind of sit around and sing uh, hymns? Is that what it means to praise the Lord? Well, praising the Lord is not a boring thing. It's what God made everything to do. And our God, the only God, is not a boring God. What does it mean, though, to praise the Lord? It means this. It means to say to God, you are so good. To praise God means to say to him, you are so good. And we can do that in lots of ways. We can do that with our mouths, with the words that we say, but we can also do it with the way that we live, with our lives. Well, why should anyone praise him? Why should anyone praise God? This psalm gives us four reasons, and they're all to do with who God is. Now, I said the psalm starts off really high, doesn't it? Verses 1 to 4 are about all of the stuff up there. The sun and the moon and the stars. And verses 5 and 6, they give us two reasons why we should praise God. And so what we're going to do is we're going to split the room in half. And if you're on this side, so your left, my right, I want you to read verse 5 and answer this question. Who is the Lord? And I want you to try and put the answer into your own words. Okay? And if you're on this side of the room, I want you to look at verse 6 and think about this question. Who is the Lord? And then try and put the answer into your own words. Okay? So I'll take a couple of minutes, read verses 5 and 6, and think about who is the Lord? Let's come back together. Let's look at verse 5, shall we? Verse 5 says, Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. Who is God? Does anyone want to share with everyone else? Who is God? He's the creator of absolutely everything. He's the maker of everything. Isn't that absolutely amazing? He made the sun. He made the sun. Do you remember a few weeks ago, it was really hot, wasn't it? It was in London. I guess it probably was in Bournemouth. And I think, you know, the highest temperature was something like 38 degrees. And that felt pretty hot. People were out buying fans. People were putting, you know, flannels on their foreheads, doing whatever they could uh, to keep cool. Now imagine if we somehow could get in a rocket and we could go to the sun and we got to the surface of the sun. It'd be five and a half thousand degrees there. Now that's really hot, isn't it? But imagine if we went right into the middle of the sun, right into the center of the sun. It'd be 15 million degrees. And God made it. God made it. And the sun is so big that we could fit over a million earths inside it. It's huge. And God made it. And it wasn't even hard for him to make it. 
God made the sun, he made the moon, he made the angels, and they should praise him because of who he is. Let's look at verse 6. Verse 6 says, He set them in place forever and ever. He gave a decree that will never pass away. Who is the Lord? Anyone want to share with us? Who is the Lord? Tell you what I thought. He's the one who keeps everything going, isn't he? He's the one who keeps the, the sun shining. He's the one who keeps the earth spinning. You know the sea goes out and it goes in, doesn't it? It goes out and in, time after time after time. And it does because of the moon. Isn't that just insane? The, the, the tide goes in and out because of the moon. And God keeps that going because God is great. God is is amazing and creation praises God by doing the very things that he made it to do our God is great he is marvelous he made everything and he keeps it all going now verse 13 have a look at verse 13 it tells us more about the Lord it says his name alone is exalted that means his name surpasses every other name you think of some of the the famous names on earth You have the Queen, Owen Farrell, Cliff Richard, that's what my mum would say, Mozart. These people are famous, aren't they? I remember when I I lived in Sheffield, I I used to work in a convenience uh, shop, and quite often we would get old Sheffield Wednesday players who would come into this shop, and I, I love Sheffield Wednesday, so I'd be super excited when these when these guys would come in. And I remember I was there one morning, and Gary Megson, don't worry if you've never heard of Gary Megson, but he came into the shop, and I thought, this is amazing. And he came over to uh, the counter where I was serving, and I was so kind of starstruck that I couldn't open the carrier bag. You know what it's like when you've got a carrier bag and you just cannot open it? And I was kind of, my hands were, were shaking because... To, to me, he was someone great, and it was awesome to be in the presence of such greatness. But in light of who God is, that is a ridiculous illustration, because God is great. He is awesome, and so why should I be more excited about a man than I am about God? Because it says here, God's name is exalted. Can you think of anyone who is like God? There is no one else like him. No one else like him. And so this week, let me encourage you, just slow down and look around at the world. Look at the things he's made. You know, leaves and trees and birds and just the complexity, just the design, just... It all just screams, God is great. There's a problem, isn't there? Because does everybody in the world praise God? Does everybody in the world praise God? I can think of people here who don't praise God. Have a look at these pictures. What's wrong with these pictures? I wonder if these pictures annoy you. They're out of line. Yep. <laughs> the soldier's going the wrong way. The manhole cover's out of line. The paving stone's facing the wrong way. And there's a blue sprinkle in, in amongst all of the red sprinkles. And so creation around us, that's doing what it's supposed to do. It's praising God. But what do people do when they're told to praise God? They say No. They say, no. They say, no, I won't praise you. We're out of sync with the rest of the world. We're out of line. We're out of order. Just think about people. Don't know what's shocked you on the news lately. A murdered policeman. Immigrants that nobody seems to want. Crowds of people parading the streets, celebrating immorality. A bomb at a wedding rioting the world is broken and so are we 
Just think about what you're like. You need to think about what I'm like. We get jealous when someone's got what we want. We hate other people, though we pretend to like them. We're proud, we're boastful, unforgiving, we're bitter, we're cowardly, we're self-righteous. We turn a blind eye to evil, turn a blind eye to the needs of others. And does God care about this kind of stuff? Does God care that out of all he's made, human beings are out of line? They're out of order. Absolutely he cares about that. He didn't make us to be like this. But you know what? God is in the business of turning things around. He's working to bring about a world that is full of praise, a perfect place where everything is as it should be. Because that's what the last verse is all about. It's about God's great power to rescue. It's about God's great power to transform. Have a look at verse 14. He has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his saints, of Israel, the people close to his heart. Now that might sound a bit strange to us, But the point of it is basically this. On this earth, God has a people who belong to him. They're his people. And a long time ago, God did something for those people, something so brilliant that the whole world should praise him for it. You see, this psalm could well have been written after God's people, God's people were called Israel, after God's people had come back from the land of Babylon. Now, I've got a sign here. It says Babylon on it. I don't know if you can read this at the back. Babylon was a place, and it was a bad place. You didn't want to be in Babylon. And God's people, the Israelites, were in Babylon. Let me stick that up there. I don't know if it'll. No, I don't think that's going to stay. God's people were in Babylon. They had their own land that God had given to them, but they disobeyed God. And so God was angry with them. And so he'd sent the Babylonians to them and they had captured them. And they'd taken Israel away to Babylon. Babylon was a bad place to be and they were stuck there. But God in his wonderful mercy and his kindness, he'd brought the people home. He'd brought them out of Babylon. Verse 14 describes what he did. What he did. It says he raised up a horn. He raised up a horn. Sounds a bit weird to us, doesn't it? But what it means is this. God acted in strength and deliverance to rescue the people. Very simply, they were in a bad place and God took them out of that bad place and he put them in a good place. He brought them back to their own land so that they could be the people that he made them to be. And it's that kind of change from bad to good that God is doing in the world right now. He's taking people who aren't praising him, people who couldn't care less about him, and he's changing them, he's saving them so that they say, God, you are so good. He's rescuing them from his anger. He's changing them because God will have a world where everything praises him. And how's he doing this work? He's doing this work through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The horn in verse 14 from where the rescue comes, is a signpost. It points forwards to the ultimate rescuer, Jesus. He's the one who does this work of making everything better so that people praise him again. Jesus always praised God. He was never like the soldier that we saw who was going the wrong way. But the reason Jesus came was not to set as an example primarily, but to die for us to die for us. He died on the cross and he rose again. He died for our sins and he rose again so that all of our sins can be forgiven. And all the ways that we've lived that haven't praised God can be forgiven. They can all be forgiven. You can be forgiven. I don't know if you're bothered about that. You should be. You can be forgiven. And not only can we be forgiven, but we can be changed. People are always wanting to change their lives. They change their diets, they change their clothes, they make resolutions. People are always wanting 
to change, but we cannot change ourselves, not deep down. Only Jesus can do that. And so if you're here and you think, yes, that's me, I trust him, I trust him, then you can know God has forgiven all of my sins and he's going to be at work in you, changing you. He's taking you out of that bad place of not praising him and he's making you into a person who does praise him. He's bringing you back into line, back into sync with the rest of the world. And God is rescuing people like you and me. And that is so amazing because we do not deserve it one little bit. So what might it look like for you this week to praise the Lord? What might it look like for you to praise the Lord? Let me give you a few suggestions. You might play football this week, or cricket, or you might be running around outside. And it may be that as you do that, you say to God, God, you are so good. I look at my legs that can run. I look at my hands that can catch. And I look at the energy you've given me, and I realize I don't deserve any of this. And I praise you for it. And I'm going to run with all my might. I'm going to be the best football player I can be with all my might to praise you. Praising God is not boring. We can do it with the normal things of life. Or you might be having dinner and you might just sit there and think, God, you are so good. This food, it just looks so good. It just tastes so good. Thank you. Thank you for this food. Or perhaps you're visiting the doctor this week, and it might be you're sitting in the surgery, and you say, God, you are so good. I praise you for this doctor. I praise you that you have given people skills who can look after our bodies. I praise you for it. But it may be that something terrible happens to you this week. Terrible things happen to people all the time. Can you praise God in a terrible time? And I think we can. Because I think in the hardest times, in the most terrible times, we can say to God, God, I thank you that when Jesus walked this earth, he knew what a terrible place it is. And he suffered. And as I suffer now, I praise you that you're not a God who's far off, but you're a God who's near. And even though this is painful, even though this hurts, I will praise you in it. God made each of us to praise him. He made everything to praise him. He's the maker. He keeps it all going. His name is exalted. And most of all, he sent a savior for people who do not deserve one. People like you and like me. So will you praise the Lord? Will you praise the Lord with your life? Or will you stay out of sync with the whole of creation? Well, let's pray together. Father, we want to confess that so often we are sluggish and so often we, we don't consider your greatness we don't realize just how involved in every single bit of our lives you are. We don't realize how good you are. So, Father, we, we pray that your word would take root in our hearts. We pray that we'd be people who, who praise you each day, every day, all day. Whatever happens, good or bad, Lord, we pray you'd do this miracle in us because we cannot change ourselves. But the Lord Jesus can. And so we pray. Please help us. Amen.